Hello folks, happy International Women's Day and thank you everyone for joining. We thought we would start with a little Shania Twain to set the mood today. So everyone, welcome. My name is Sam and I work on the events team here at Algonquin College. And today we are joined by Kelsey Marion from Get Sorted. We are gonna discuss her journey to owning her own business and she's gonna share some of her top um, favorite organizational tips and tricks. So thank you so much for joining us everyone. We hope you're having a wonderful day. But before I hand the floor over to Kelsey, I'm just gonna go over a few housekeeping and um, introduction notes. So folks, we want we welcome you to use the chat tab to connect with the Algonquin College community throughout this event today. If you have any questions for Kelsey at all today throughout her presentation, feel free to post them into the chat or into the Q&A, and we'll do some questions towards the end of the event. Um, the AC Hub hosts a variety of events each month. For upcoming events, please check out our events calendar, which we'll post a link to in the chat. Today's event is equipped with closed captioning if you need it. To turn on closed captioning, just select the closed caption um, button at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. And this event is being recorded and the recording will be available to watch on the AC Hub on demand website in the coming days. And again, we'll share a link to that in the chat. Okay, everyone. So since it is International Women's Day, which is a day to celebrate women's achievements and to raise awareness about women's equality, we wanted to acknowledge and appreciate a woman who owns her own successful business. And we thought Kelsey Marion was the perfect fit for this. Kelsey is the owner of Get Sorted, which is a leading professional decluttering and organization builds business out of Toronto. Kelsey is passionate about bridging the gap between physical and mental clutter. She believes that organizing and cleanliness is a form of self-care and overall wellness. Getting sorted surpasses the simplicity of labeling containers and jars. It's where organization needs wellness. So Kelsey, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. And we are really excited to hear from you. So Kelsey, you can take it away. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so for the presentation. Right. Loading. Okay, so we're good? <laughs> okay, great. So hi everyone, my name is Kelsey Marion and I use the pronouns she and her. Before beginning, I'd like to take the time to acknowledge that the land Algonquin College is on is on the traditional unceded unsurrendered territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe territory. As well, since I'm in the Toronto area, I'd also like to acknowledge the land that I am on, which is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, uh, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to say happy International Women's Day. I am so honored to be here today um, to share a little bit about who I am and my business. It really means a lot to me to be able to speak with you today on International Women's Day because women have played such an important role in my life, both personally and professionally. And as someone who was raised by a single mom, I know firsthand just how strong and inspiring women are. My mom had me at 17 years old. We grew up in a low-income household and we were no strangers to food banks, amongst other socioeconomic factors. Being in a lower income position typically comes with barriers and limitations. As you can imagine, teenage pregnancy also creates a lot of barriers and challenges, especially for young girls and women. According to the University of British Columbia, teenage pregnancy is the number one leading reason that teenage girls between the ages of 13 and 19 drop out of school. More than 50% of teenage mothers never graduate from high school and less than 2% of teenage mothers earn a college degree by the time they reach 30 years of age due to the various barriers. Fortunately, the rates of teenage pregnancy have dramatically dropped since the 1990s and I'm also proud to share that my mom was able to overcome this statistic. By 19 years old, she graduated from high school and by 27, she completed her college degree and 
acquired a government job with Statistics Canada, all while raising two young kids. From an early age, I learned what it means to be resourceful and a hard worker. Once I reached high school, it was clear to me that social work would be part of my career path. I attended Carleton University for social work and completed the four-year program. I worked at CHEO for my practicum and in educational settings. I worked in the Youth Service Bureau as a facilitator and in group homes. I would not trade these experiences for anything. But during my time in social services, I began to have doubts, not in working with and supporting people, but in my role. I decided to remove myself entirely from the social work and counseling setting. It was difficult for me to see myself in any other field as I'd very much attached my identity to social work. I briefly shifted my focus to the art therapy field. I enrolled in the arts program with the University of Ottawa and briefly volunteered at community centers and shelters facilitating expressive art sessions under the supervision of a licensed psychotherapist. Although I loved connecting with people and being creative, the doubt started creeping in again. Eventually, home organization came up in conversation. I had been happily sorting spaces for my friends and family for years. It was clear that I loved organizing spaces and I was getting pretty good at it. The organizing field is still a niche field. Some of you have maybe never even heard of a professional organizer prior to me. Growing up, I had never even heard of such a service beyond maybe a celebrity closet organizer. But there was something inside of me that told me I should go for it. It has been over four years and Get Sorted is still in business and I'm still doing what I love. Again, my name is Kelsey Marion. I am the owner of Get Sorted and this presentation will focus on my entrepreneurial journey, what I've learned along the way, doses of inspiration, and of course, fun organizing tips you can apply to your life. I believe that the smallest changes to your environment can impact your routines, your days, and how you feel in your life. First, we're going to explore five benefits of getting sorted. Number one, it can reduce stress, anxiety, and depressive feelings. According to a Princeton University study, it was found that our brains, in fact, prefer order. Clutter drains our cognitive resources. In addition, the stress hormone cortisol were found to be higher in folks whose environments were cluttered compared to those who were not. It was also found that clutter can lower productivity and increase issues with insomnia, procrastination, and even depression. Thus, less mess scientifically equals less stress. Take a look at this home office. When you observe the before photo, you can see that it is cluttered, not very accessible, and not set up well to work or learn in. When you see the before photo, it may even evoke feelings of stress or overwhelm. The after photo, however, is decluttered, organized, and clearly ready to work in. Organizing is a way to soothe the stress out of the space and in turn, lower the stress in you. Reason number two, it can increase your productivity levels. To improve your focus, notice how you lose it. Cluttered spaces can be very distracting. Having an organized space is motivating, leads to feelings of satisfaction and positive energy. Productivity strategies are also shown to be more effective if they feel meaningful. Try reframing something you must do in terms of your core values for stronger and more sustained focus. Number three, it can save you time. When everything has a home, there is no time wasted trying to find things. If you're procrastinating, it probably means that your brain doesn't have all the information, stimulation, or motivation it needs to get things done. You could be procrastinating because one, you don't know what to do or where to begin, or maybe you don't know what the next step is. In this case, to break down the steps into action so you know how to tackle them. The second reason could be that 
you simply don't feel like performing the task, which happens. Instead, identify why you don't want to do something so you can figure out different approaches that will help you. Being more organized will ultimately help you prioritize your time and help you get things done more efficiently. Number four, it increases your chances of achieving your goals. If you're structured and create a plan, it will make how you'll achieve your goals much clearer. Start by making a list of your goals, the objectives it will take to achieve them, then begin prioritizing these items. Number five, it can save you money. Being organized will save you from buying things you can't find. When items such as your food are sorted, it will be much easier to identify what you have and don't have. By decluttering, you can even make some extra cash. Often we have items lying around that we do not use, want, or need. Next, we'll get into what I do and my credentials. I am a member of the Professional Organizers in Canada. I'm also a member of the Institute for Challenging Disorganization, and I have certificates in the foundations of chronic disorganization and in the study of ADHD. I provide decluttering and organizing services to folks in Toronto, the GTA, and Ottawa, with a focus on enhancing my clients' environmental wellness and accessibility I support my clients in having the organized home they've always wanted. I help remove the clutter, find a home for everything, and create custom systems. Before beginning sessions, I do an in-home assessment, either in person or virtually, to collect photos, tour the home, and establish a timeline for sessions. I help my clients make progress on their space and reach their organizing goals. Prior to organizing this space that you see, it was very cluttered and not accessible. After sorting, decluttering, and finding a home for everything, my clients shared that the space felt bigger, brighter, and like a weight was lifted off their shoulders. Primarily, I like to use my clients' existing storage items before suggesting anything new. This walk-in pantry already had enough storage items, so it was more a matter of decluttering and setting up systems. I also help my clients pack and unpack their homes to make the moving process easier. And in this project, I suggested new storage items for my client as it was uh, beneficial for the space, um, such as you can see in the furthest to the right, the clear bins. Um, but overall, if you'd like to see more before and after photos, then after the presentation, you can go follow Get Sorted on Instagram. The handle is at Get Sorted with Kelsey. Another aspect of my business includes virtual organizing services. Virtual organizing is ideal for folks who are motivated to tackle the space themselves, but need guidance on where to begin and how to set up the space and who would like accountability and support throughout the project. And last in this section includes a shop page. In 2021, I added a shop page to my website filled with organizing products. You can find bins, baskets, Lazy Susans, drawer organizers, and more. Now, you're probably wondering how the pandemic affected my business. At the beginning of COVID-19, I did have to pause my services, like many businesses. At the time, it was concerning as no one really knew how long the pandemic would last. And I was concerned when I'd be able to work in homes again. Professional organizing is not considered essential. Although my clients would argue that it's the most essential non-essential service out there. <laughs> but um, either way, it was uh, regardless of the challenges and despite the closures and needing to pause my services, 2021 turned out to be Get Sorted's best year yet. Since the pandemic began, it's safe to say that we have spent a lot more time at home and indoors than ever. Our homes uh, really started serving a purpose even more so beyond sleeping, eating, and downtime. Our homes uh, are now our workspace, gym, school, and safe space. In life, there is a lot that is beyond our control and the pandemic was certainly no exception. 
Organization and cleaning are tangible ways that we can practice uh, healthy levels of structure and consistency in our lives. How you start today may look very different tomorrow. And if you've been listening to me so far, you'll agree how true this statement is. You don't want to be in the exact same position, professionally or personally, you wanna grow ideally and evolve each year. Get Sorted has evolved greatly since its start in 2018. And I credit a big part of the evolution to the folks I've met and learned from along the way. When I started out, I had no business experience. What I did have was a whole lot of curiosity, drive, and the skill to organize. I sought out advice from fellow self-employed folks, and I continue to to this day. The beauty of gathering as much advice as you can is that really you're deciding which advice you're going to take at the end of the day. So don't turn away advice because there might be nuggets of, of um, wisdom in there that resonates with you. Back in 2018, I had, I made my, you know, created the business name, I registered my business, created a website, I made social media, but I didn't have a proper logo yet. I was six months in and still unsure of what my logo should be or look like. The image to the left, the one with the blue background and Bitmoji character was a fun temporary logo that I started out with, but I'd reached the point where I knew it was time to seek advice from an expert. I connected with someone with graphic design uh, experience and through a mutual friend. We chatted about what I was looking for and needed. Although I offered to pay their services for their services, it turned out that they really needed help with organizing an area of their home. We ended up coming to an agreement to trade services and that's literally how I paid for the logo I have today. One of the biggest aspects of being an entrepreneur is networking, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, learning how to speak up for yourself, embracing collaborations, and even knowing when to say no are among the experiences you can expect. About a month into Get Sorted's existence, local Ottawa social media influencer, Katie Hestian, or at Yao City Style, reached out to me on Instagram. She asked me if I was interested in collaborating. She happened to need her basement storage room organized. And of course, I needed help growing the awareness of my business. So it was perfect. With her platform and many followers, I was able to gain not only a new testimonial, but many new clients and followers. Another collaboration that I did was with a Toronto-based company called Tiny Toy Co. The owner, Rebecca, has a company that upcycles tiny toys and has a focus on reducing plastic from going to the landfills. Rebecca, like Katie, has a large following and influence. We also came to a trading agreement where I provided organizing services and she would document the experience on social media as well as leave a testimonial. In the end, it turned out to also be a positive collaboration as it brought me many new clients. Among those clients were folks who hired me to organize their entire home and I still work with them doing maintenance to this day. I'm sharing this with you today because I just wanna show you that you don't always need a big budget or a big budget to get started or even grow the awareness of your business. Sometimes you can use what you already have and trade those services or products with folks who are looking for what you're offering. As well, I'm sharing this as, it's an example of women helping women in the entrepreneurial field. These women took the time to connect with me, a new entrepreneur, and help by using their platform to help grow the awareness of Get Sorted. And obviously, I'm very grateful um, for them uh, reaching out and being so um, supportive. Lastly, I did not appear on an episode of uh, the tr local, well, local to Toronto, Toronto show, The Social. I attended as a member in the audience. I'm sharing this because one, it's fun, and two, because at the time uh, I had just moved to Toronto, I didn't really know anyone, but I decided to get tickets to be in the audience. 
I use this time to chat up anyone who would listen to me ramble on about my new business, Get Sorted. I met members from the social and connected with fellow members of the audience. And former co-host of the social, Marcy Ian, even follows Get Sorted on Instagram. I'm telling you this just to remind you to have fun. As entrepreneurs, it's really easy to forget to have fun and enjoy the moment and in between the hard work. Meet people, even if you feel intimidated or a little shy, because you never know what will come out of the exchange. Next, we're going to explore what I've learned to be important, and hopefully after this, you will too. As a business owner and professional organizer, I'm actively working on evolving the experience of getting organized. I want people to experience the power that can accompany an organized and decluttered space. An experience that will make your home more accessible and simply make you feel more at ease. Why do I do what I do? Well, aside from absolutely loving organized spaces, I believe that everyone should benefit from living in an organized environment. One that feels safe, beautiful, and just makes your daily life better. Getting sorted has provided me the opportunity to put the inner workings of my brain on display through combining my love of order and making people feel better in their homes. Knowing what matters to you is important. Your core values will act as your North Star for each decision you make and give you the drive that you need. They may change over time, but it will ultimately act as your moral compass and make your personal and professional decisions in life clearer. For example, I decided to implement a change in my business where a percentage of each in-person and virtual organizing services uh, service sales will be donated to a registered charity each month. This change aligns with my core value community. I was inspired by my friend Diana, who practices this initiative through her Toronto-based business, Hair Holistic, as well as my friend Nicole, who also practices this initiative in her Ottawa-based business, Radical Adornments. It is also important to me to include a clear message that gets sorted celebrates diversity. I serve each client with respect and quality service, no matter their gender, race, sexual orientation, religion, and so on. I make the effort to include consistent and clear inclusive messaging throughout my website and practices because this aligns with my core value equality. What is so wonderful about being an entrepreneur is that you can craft your business to align with your core values one that acts with integrity, inclusivity, honesty, or considers community. As well as a professional organizer, I get to know people on a more personal level than most. We are being invited into our clients' homes and seeing it in a state that they typically don't want anyone to see. Considering how it can feel vulnerable, vulnerable for our clients, I believe it's important that Professional organizers, you know, lead with patience and empathy as they support their clients through that process. You don't have to pretend that you're not afraid. Acknowledge it. Let it be seen and heard. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You can move forward with more self-compassion and even confidence. When I first started Get Sorted, I, felt, I was very insecure and experienced an intense fear of failure because once everyone knew about Get Sorted, they could also see me fail. Because who am I to own a business? Who am I to be the owner of a business and create my own schedule? All these types of inner critic thoughts would you know, come in. And although I had the skills and the drive, and of course, we're always gonna be learning, there was this clouded feeling of imposter syndrome. And at times, to be honest, I still struggle with it. I've learned over the years that I am unfortunately not alone in this feeling of imposter syndrome. In fact, in 2020, Forbes surveyed 750 women from major companies about their experiences, if any, with imposter syndrome. Based on their surveys, they found that 75% of women identified having experienced imposter syndrome 
at various points during their careers. And 85% believe it is commonly experienced by women. It's imperative that uh, leaders and organizations successfully build supportive environments and foster a sense of belonging that can help women confidently grow and thrive. What I've learned is to lean into the fears because the fears won't necessarily go away entirely, but how you handle it can evolve and improve over time. You have what it takes to conquer your fears, but it starts with you and a supportive community. Plain and simple, owning a business can be hard. You must choose to keep moving forward, to persevere, and keep your goals in the forefront of your mind. When you admit to yourself, I'm stuck, or this feels awful, and you let that truth sit in your awareness without fighting it or using it to demean yourself, it then loses its power. When I moved to Toronto, it took me months to get work, longer than I'd like to admit. In fact, it took me almost six months to book an organizing job in Toronto. As you can imagine, my savings quickly dwindled away. I was 24 years old, broke, beginning to rack up credit card debt and really questioning my decision to move to Toronto. I had clearly underestimated how long it would take me to establish my business in such a big and competitive city. I had called one of my best friends during this challenging time telling her that if I do not book an organizing job in Toronto within the next week, then I think it's just time to quit trying to make get sorted work in Toronto. Well, the universe seemed to have a plan because a few days later, I booked my first few organizing jobs in Toronto, and then it just continued to grow and grow from there. And keep in mind, I was not just sitting at home hoping for jobs to appear. I continued to work in Ottawa often, which is really what helped keep me afloat for that long. And I made it my full-time job to attend networking events and meetups. I was active on social media, messaging other folks and telling them about my business. I walked down busy downtown Toronto streets asking if I could leave business cards and flyers at their stores. In fact, um, and I even um, did odd jobs like dog walking in Toronto. And, and some of those jobs that I acquired were through people I dog walked for. I likely would not have acquired those jobs if I didn't share that I had an organizing business. Overall, it took months of trial and error to make it work uh, in Toronto, but it happened. Some, something I started doing as well last year uh, is to keep track of my wins. So whenever a client leaves testimonial, sends me a positive message about their experience, or say I book a speaking engagement, I write it down or I'll print it out and I'll place it in a folder. And I'll refer to it when I'm having a bad day, just to remind me of what I'm capable of. Lastly, I really recommend uh surrounding yourself with a really solid support system so whether it's one or two people or however many just surround yourself with people that will remind you of what you're capable of when you're having those low moments or bad days because you know it is really important to believe in yourself and your work but it really helps to have a caring and supportive uh community and people in your life Overall, I've, uh, what I've learned is that being an entrepreneur is harder than you think, but you're also stronger than you realize. Wellness. Wellness matters because everything we do and every emotion we feel relates to our well-being. Our well-being directly affects our actions and emotions. Being an entrepreneur is hard. There are many ups and downs going to make mistakes, get rejected, and have bad days in between the, the highlights. <laughs> it just comes with the territory. Getting organized also requires work, time, planning, and thoughtfulness, and can be, to some people's surprise, emotional for the clients. When I work with my clients, I take careful consideration into the various factors that go beyond a messy space. 
in 2018, one of my first clients asked me to organize their entire home, including their kitchen. As per usual, I removed and sorted the pantry food. Before I put the sorted food back, I always double check for expiry dates. As I was setting aside the expired food, I started noticing a trend. Most of the expired food was from 2015. Now again, keep in mind we were in 2018. As my client looked through the expired food, they also acknowledged the trend of the year. My client then shared that they had actually been in a depression around 2015. This is a reminder how our physical environment and the physical items that accompany them can bring up memories for better or worse. Sometimes items in the home, whether they be a mug, an article of clothing or food, um, it can bring up different points in a client's life or a person's life. Your wellness matters because it's all connected. If your emotional wellness is not being tended to, it can affect your physical wellness and environmental wellness or vice versa. Anxiety or depression can lead to a cluttered home and a cluttered home can lead to depression and more anxiety. So it's all uh, interconnected. Overall, what I've learned is that Tending to your wellness is important because it's making time for your self-preservation. And again, your, uh, by being more organized and decluttering, it's a way to enhance your environmental wellness. Sometimes things don't go as planned. In fact, things don't go as planned a lot. It likely will take some time, but one day you'll wake up and you'll be grateful some things didn't turn out the way that you had originally planned. At the end of the day, you either win or you learn. And I've had my fair share of both. It was definitely difficult for me when I moved to Toronto, but I choose to find the lesson in it all. It pushed me to work harder, get out of my comfort zone in a big way, and meet new people and stretch myself in ways that I didn't even know I was capable of. Part of the reason I decided to move to Toronto was because I envisioned major growth opportunities, both personally and professionally. I could see Get Sorted serving multiple cities and areas. And this is the case today, and I'm continuing to explore ways to expand. What I've learned is that whatever chapter you're in, be it good or bad, it's only one chapter. Don't let one chapter define the whole story. As a professional organizer, my personal approach is to reframe organizing from the act of a chore to the act of self-care. I believe that organization and cleanliness is a form of self-care. At the end of the day, it's not about perfectly sorted junk drawers or pantries, although we all love that. <laughs> It's about instilling order in your life and enhancing your environmental wellness. Next, we're going to explore five ways you can get organized as well as some ADHD friendly organizing tips. But before anything, consider applying the following four foundational steps, sort, declutter, organize and systemize and maintain. Number one, organize by category. Store items that are alike together. Additionally, it's helpful to store items that are used together. Number two, create to-do lists. If you have a lot of responsibilities and things on your mind, you'll wanna sort your thoughts by creating lists. Writing out your plan for the day, whether it be in the morning or the night before, is a way to help reduce stress. Crossing items off your to-do list, no matter how small, gives us a sense of accomplishment. To-do lists give us structure and they're proof of what we've achieved in the day. If you see a lot of unfinished tasks left on your to-do list, try to figure out why. Did you try to get everything done at one time? Maybe you need to delegate. Did you list big tasks that could be broken down into smaller ones? Or did distractions keep you from completing your tasks? Use this information to help arrange future to-do lists or to find ways to help you work more efficiently. 
Number three, start small. Start small so you don't get overwhelmed. Set fair and reasonable expectations for yourself. Know your limits. You can start with a drawer or your desk. And as a tip, measure your space before you buy any organizing products, just to make sure that it will fit. What I've learned is that one small focused action every day can create a ripple effect, which will eventually lead to a complete change in your entire home. Number four, apply the file fold. The file fold was made popular by Marie Kondo. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, she is amazing. She has a huge franchise, um, but she made this uh, uh, clothing storage um, approach really popular. So basically you can fold your clothes how you normally would, but instead of stacking the clothes on top of one another, like most, a lot of people do, you just turn the stack upwards and uh, like in the photo shown, and it's a lot easier to see what you have. And I think it looks great. Number five, do a daily shutdown for a clean slate. Ideally stick to a standard time where you'll shut down for the day. I, I acknowledge that for some folks, it can be difficult to set that boundary, but it is really, I think it is really important if you can um, to uh, make that practice or continue that practice. Tidy your work or your study space at the end of each day um, and repeat that every day just to set that line. As an entrepreneur, it's really easy to lose track of time because I don't have anyone telling me when to finish work or go on break. So it's a lot of taking initiative and being cognizant of my time and my schedule. Um, so it's easier to work longer than a typical work day. Working from home can also make it difficult to set that work-life balance, like whatever balance means to people. And, um, but overall, applying a daily shutdown gives you a fresh start feeling and a clear indication of what you'll do in the day ahead and so you can cater to the other aspects of your life because we are all much more than just our jobs. Next, we're just going to briefly touch on some ADHD friendly uh, organizing tips and things to consider. So I just like to preface by saying that I am not an expert in ADHD. I am however, studying how to better support my clients with ADHD through the Institute for Challenging Disorganization. For anyone who doesn't know, ADHD stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. I'd also like to note that not all folks with ADHD have the same symptoms or challenges. That is why it's considered a spectrum disorder. I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was in my third year of university. Although it would have been helpful for me to know this diagnosis sooner, it has been very helpful nonetheless, just to have the awareness and to be proactive about learning how I can better you know, support myself. I also recommend referring to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM, uh, for more detailed information if it's something that you're interested in learning about. All right, number one, use timers. External cues can help folks with ADHD stay on task and prioritize. The visual nature of a timer, a visual timer, provides a great external cue to stay on task. With one glance, you can see how much time is left. This gives individuals with ADHD the ability to anticipate deadlines and transitions more easily. Number two, set up your space to optimize the point of performance. So when organizing your space, have everything you need to perform a task at arm's reach. By putting cues and making it physically visual, it can help you stay on track at the point of performance. For example, if you're organizing an area of your kitchen and you're someone who drinks coffee in the morning, consider where you're storing your mugs, where your coffee machine will go, is it close to the sink? Where will your coffee grounds and pods go? It is, it's really thinking about how you're going to complete a task such like for something as simple maybe as having your morning coffee. 
um, and just making that process, all of these micro moments and these tasks more efficient. Setting up tasks to optimize your point of performance is the goal. And this is something that a professional organizer can help you with. I'd also like to mention that some level of clutter is inevitable and it's okay. <laughs> if you're using a space, it will become messy to some degree. It is about finding a home for everything and setting up your home to work well for you. Because when everything has a home, it will make the tidying up process much easier and more efficient. So again, trying not to um, be too focused on perfection and no mess at all, because if we're using a space, it's totally normal for it to get messy. The point is, again, when it is time to tidy up, then you, you don't have to think about it because you know where everything is going to go. Overall, I truly believe that living and working in an environment that feels good is beneficial to one's mental and physical well-being. Psychologist Courtney Lepresti once said that our brain, our brains, our bodies are organized systems designed to self-clean. It wouldn't be a surprise then if the reason we crave symmetry and cleanliness in our homes is to mirror the organization within our very own bodies. If after trying on your own, you find you're still overwhelmed, do not hesitate to ask for help from a friend or a professional organizer. Entrepreneurship presents a path for women to close the pay gap and rise to leadership positions on their own terms. Today is not only a day to celebrate those who identify as women, but also to engage in calls to action for gender equality. Gender equality is an essential part in building a fair and sustainable world. Gender equality is not an issue for women. It's an issue for all of us. We need to keep talking about the inequalities that exist for women and continue to put measures in place to remove these challenges. It's also imperative to recognize and address the inequalities and inequities that are experienced by Indigenous folks, persons of color, newcomers, members of the LGBTQ community, and persons with disabilities and exceptionalities. On International Women's Day and every day, let's reflect on the kind of community and country we want to live. I would not be here today without the support of my many amazing family, friends, and community members. Four years ago, I couldn't even imagine what I would build today. Honestly, even five years ago, I didn't know I'd be the owner of a business and be providing a service that I believe helps people in such a unique way. Transforming my space truly turned into transforming my life. There are fields and jobs out there that you may have never even heard of. A job that will bring you joy and a job that will hopefully even make the world a little bit better. Thank you again, Algonquin College, for the opportunity to speak with you all today. If you're interested in learning more about how you can get sorted, consider connecting with me through the following ways. Thanks again. Kelsey, that was so great. I loved every minute of that. That was amazing. So many great tips, so many words of wisdom. I really enjoyed that. So thank you so much. We do have a couple of questions that came in through the Q&A, but before we get to those, I've got a few questions for you. So my first question is, so I often think like I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and I've had like these business ideas, but a major barrier for me, and I feel like a lot of people, but maybe specifically a lot of women or people who identify as women um, feel is that we lack that confidence to take those first few steps because, you know, the patriarchal society that we live in often tells us that, you know, we, we might not be capable enough or we're not strong enough, all of that stuff. So where did you get those first, where did you get that confidence to take those first few steps to uh, start your business? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it's interesting because I am somebody who is very shy and introverted, just as my natural nature, <laughs> I guess. And I often sometimes, like I surprise myself that I've even done this. And <laughs> I think though it's at the same time, I think it's really to say that 
uh, like you don't have to, like if you're worried of like, oh, I'm not somebody who's really extroverted or you're worrying about like kind of whatever narrative or idea of what like an entrepreneur or business owner looks like, I think it's just create your own because that's what I've learned organically over time because I did have those hesitations as well. I was worried. I'm like, oh, I'm not uh, extroverted enough or I'm not this fearless kind of person or, you know, like, but it's, uh, it's a mixture of that. And then your inner critic that you kind of have to work on over time. Yeah. I, I would, I would say. Um, and, but I think it's just, it's, it's just going for it anyway. Like if you really feel solid about a product or a service, like just go for it, just try, just try. And then it also, again, it helps to have a really supportive, um, you know, community friends. Like, I feel like I hit the jackpot in that sense because like I have a really great family and uh, like support system overall. And I think that's made a major difference in my journey of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, definitely. That makes such a difference to have that support system. Like it's so important. Even just one person in your life that's rooting for you is really, really important. Okay, Kelsey. So my next question is, what scares you the most about owning your own business and how do you manage that fear? I think the biggest fear um, that I've had, and it's not as intense of a fear as when I started, but it's this fear of failure. Yes, (laughs) for sure. uh, And then just being self-employed and everyone knowing I, like, you know, everyone's seeing you try. <laughs> so <laughs> very vulnerable. Be- and, um, and so, and it's mainly uh, just something again, that we typically it's have to sort through in our own kind of mind and feelings about it. But yeah, that I think is the biggest one. But um, I think what's helped is a mixture of, okay, well, I'm not we're not perfect. It's very normal to make mistakes. And then also an example, like I shared today, a bunch of mistakes that I've made and, you know, things I questioned, I'm like, Oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? (laughs) I think it's just speaking that fear of, so just sharing when things didn't turn out in an ideal way. I think that it takes away this, uh, sense of judgment that we put on ourselves. It's just kind of like putting the fear out there and just being like, you know what, like, this is just real. And this is going to happen. There's also been a lot of great moments. So, um, you know, you don't want that a few times, like hard times to define your whole story when you've actually done a lot of things that have been successful too. So hopefully that answers your question. (laughs) No, that totally does. And I completely agree. I feel like sharing your failures and your like fears is so incredibly important because everyone feels the same way. Not, not the exact same way, but you know, everyone's got those same fears and those insecurities and just sharing them. Like it, it's really powerful to share them and put them out into the world. And then, you know, if you do fail, you put it out there and people like, it's not, you feel less judged and you feel less. Um, I just, I just feel like that's a huge thing. It just empowers you. Yeah. And so I sharing think sharing is really important. Yeah. And to add to it as well, I think that because, you know, we might find ourselves in this comparison, uh, you know, mode and we'll look at people and, you know, they're doing really well. And sometimes we forget to consider they've had really hard times or they've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So, which it just makes it, I think, more relatable. So we're all figuring it out. <laughs> exactly. We are, we're all figuring it out. Even if it looks like someone's got it together, they're figuring it out too. So, <laughs> yeah. okay. So my next question, Kelsey, and this one's specifically about organizing. What is your favorite aspect or thing to do, or just in general, what is your favorite thing about organizing? Oh, it's just the, <laughs> the satisfaction of trans. It's so satisfying. <laughs> Extremely satisfying. (laughs) I get as much satisfaction for organizing a space for a client like somebody else as I do from as if it were my own space. (laughs) Like that's how genuinely (laughs) my love for this field is. And, uh, and it's just also I love it's so another part that's like really gratifying is seeing 
kind of that relief, like that sense of relief uh, for my clients when, you know, certain areas are tackled, like they've been living maybe in like certain areas of their home have been cluttered and disorganized for years. And, and then I come in for like a session or a few sessions and it's just, just see, it's very um, infectious, like feeling that kind of sense of relief. And so it definitely, I definitely feel it <laughs> and it's, it feels great. <laughs> I recently started like getting into organizing and like I've organized my pantry kind of not like fully, but kind of, and I got some really cool jars and stuff in the dollar store. And like, I just, it's so satisfying. Like when your pasta is getting low and you just put it yeah. back into the little container and then you toss the box Oh, just like those little things for me are so satisfying and so gratifying. So I can imagine like doing it for other people and seeing them react and stuff, how awesome that would be. So, okay. I have one more question, Kelsey. What had, what or who has been your greatest inspiration in this whole entrepreneurship um, journey of yours? Oh, that's a good question too. Um, I think that Ultimately, it's not been one particular person. It's just been multiple people. And um, I think that like in terms of like specifically the organizing field, I'm really impressed by Marie Kondo. Um, I don't practice uh, the same approach as her, as her but um, I'm just so impressed. Like she's created a whole franchise, same with uh, Joanna and Clea from the home edits they've also made like just in terms of the scale that it can go is just so impressive and um, they both have very different uh, their companies have very different approaches but it's just it's nice to see women thriving in this field and in all fields um, so those would be I guess my immediate answers for the organizing field awesome thanks Kelsey so we do have a questions in the Q&A here. So let's go over to those. Okay, so my first one here is from Anonymous and they ask tips for introverted or not outgoing people who want to start a business. Mm, yeah, so that's, yeah, I, I am a self-proclaimed introverted entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think that, so for net, like, networking, for example, like the thought for an introvert, that is exhausting <laughs> and it is, <laughs> but it you know, also, I think if you just find that right approach, just, um, do it in doses. Like when you go to an event, you don't have to go for like four hours. You can go for half an hour, make a goal to talk to, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, say, okay, I'm going to act like have genuine conversation with and make connections with five people. And, or, or it could be one person depending on where you're at. And so like, you don't have to completely drain yourself to, you know, make connections. And as well, I find that online, like just connecting with people and getting to know local businesses and entrepreneurs also really helps because I find it like for me anyway, it's a lot, I mean, it takes a lot less out of me to message somebody online in person is ideal, but at least for the time you could work up to it, um, like reach out, say like, thanks for following me, or I'll, you know, compliment them like a genuine compliment on their business or product, um, just to start making connections and letting them know that you exist and your services or products ex exist. Yeah, that's a really great tip, Kelsey. And I feel like we live in a really good um, time period for introverts because I'm, I also claim myself as an introvert and my energy gets drained very quickly, but I agree to like using the virtual word, world to connect with people, I find drains my energy less. So definitely protect your energy, whatever it takes. Um, and you can do so like virtually or whatever works best for you. That's a great tip. Okay, so Emma asks, best pantry organization tips? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. So in general, I am a big fan of Lazy Susan's or uh, Lazy Susan is such a weird <laughs> term, but that's what it's <laughs> called. Uh, so the turntables, I am obsessed with Lazy Susan's. I want them everywhere in a pantry because when they store everything great and it's also just makes things a lot more accessible so whether you have like a full walk-in pantry or you're you know like you're storing your food in cupboards like a lot of people do um 
I just find it really great for like oils and vinegars um, or even uh, if you store medicine and supplements. Um, those really help a lot. And then contain, contain things. So whether you got snacks or uh, like just sorting like pastas and whatever, just different types of bins are really handy just to keep things it need and contained. Like it doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's contained and labeled, it looks great. <laughs> like I said, I'm such a fan of the containers. So great tip, Kelsey. Okay, this one I get is from Anonymous. Any tips for organizing your work desk area? Uh, I would say ideally just try to keep it as simple as possible. You know, like you can have, like I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a minimalist. Like I like stuff. Yeah, same. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, like try to, I try to prioritize, okay, if I'm going to have little trinkets or, you know, like little things that just bring you joy, like try to keep it to a minimum. And then in terms of like, I know a lot of people now their documents are all digital, which is great because it's less physical clutter. But it, um, if you do have like hard copies of things, then, you know, just having those magazine holders um, or those um, file, like the tiered trays, just to keep things again contained, um, I think is really helpful. And um, another thing too, for if you have a lot of, you know, like cords and electronics at your desk, what I do is I use a, um, like a big basket, it has holes in it. So it's all like it can breathe, <laughs> um, but it's just like a really simple way. So I just dump the electronics or, or excess cords in there. And then it just keeps it really um, kind of more neat looking. That's awesome. So my fiance, just an anecdote, my fiance is very much into like cables and tech and all that. And so he often like spends a lot of time organizing his cables and that's the one thing he organizes. So I feel uh, like you do like a workshop on cable organization, but yeah, that's a great tip, Kelsey. And you said on your website too, you have links to, um, or lists of like a bunch of different organizational items. So yeah. if people were interested, they could check it out on your website. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, if there's anything that in general that you don't see, like I'm happy to help suggest or help find like, or, or suggest quality products to uh, people as well. Um, if anyone is looking for certain things. Okay. Awesome. So I've got one last question here for you, Kelsey. What do you like best about being your own boss? Oh, I think it's just overall, it, I mean, it's really, built my confidence I think like just again as somebody who's like more shy and like I remember when I was younger saying like I'm happy to be in the background like that kind of you know personality and being uh, my own boss has forced me to do the opposite which is really good because it's you know it's just shown me more what I'm capable of by getting out of my comfort zone so I think the personal growth aspect is major and and then as well, just like being able to create my own schedule is major. I can't even imagine requesting time off for vacation. <laughs> you know, like now that it's been over four years, I'm like, oh, you know, I that's something I feel grateful about. <laughs> like just <laughs> little and big things. Like um, I think they're all, it's all big in the end. <laughs> that's awesome, Kelsey. So I think, yeah, we've answered all of the questions that we got in. So I just want to say thank you so much, Kelsey. That was so much fun and very informative, like I said. And thank you everyone so much for taking the time today and joining us. If you're interested in more AC Hub events, we'll share a link to our events calendar in the chat now. If you're interested in connecting with Kelsey on our Instagram or our website, again, we'll share her links in the chat as well. Again, Kelsey, thank you so, so much for being here. We really appreciate it and have a great rest of your day. Yeah, thanks so much. It was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you, Kelsey. Bye, everyone. Thank you.